So good evening. My name is Vanessa Guao and I'm with the Fairfax County Department of Transportation. And I want to welcome you all to this meeting to discuss branding concepts for the Richmond Highway BRT. Uh, before we begin, I would like to review some guidelines so everyone can participate and get the most of this session. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and we will be posting it to the BRT website. The meeting begins with the presentation on the Richmond Highway BRT branding concepts. And afterwards, there will be an opportunity for questions. You are welcome to submit questions using the Q&A function in the WebEx window at any time. We will do our best to get to all the questions, and if we run out of time and we follow, we will follow up with any unanswered questions directly to all attendees. Please do not use the chat feature to submit your questions. Use the Q&A function and choose to send all panelists in the Q&A feature. If you are on the phone, Please hold your questions to the end and we will have instructions on how to ask questions at the conclusion of the presentation. We will tell you, we will tell you various ways to provide feedback and we are especially excited for you to take part in an online survey on the branding concepts beginning today through February 19th. And now I would like to welcome Mount Vernon District Supervisor Dan Stork to open up this meeting with brief remarks. Supervisor Stork. Vanessa, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can, can, hear can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. I wasn't sure if I had activated the, um, the mute button or not. So my apologies. Well, first off, folks, welcome. Thank you for coming. This is an important part of, of really our, our almost 20 year journey uh, to increase and improve Richmond Highway, not only to widen it, which um, Virginia Department of Transportation is planning to do uh, for the area from Sherwood Hall Lane down to to um, Jeff Todd Way, or in this case, to look at the bus rapid transit system, not only from the Huntington Metro all the way down past um, that to Fort Belvoir. And this is our opportunity to really change our future and create a new future, definitely a new mass transit future, and bring our quarter into the 21st century. So. We need you to be thinking about what should the 20th, 21st century, uh, you know, bus rapid transit system, frankly, the state of the art transportation system, what should that look like? What should it be called? How do we want to be thinking about it uh, in about um, 10 years when it fully opens up and we're going to be using it? So we need you to be thinking about creatively and broadly what that is and, and give us your great insight and, and also share your thoughts in the survey. But it's a pleasure uh, to be your Mount Vernon District Supervisor, and thank you very much for attending tonight. And again, look forward to hearing your many, many comments and, and uh, responses to the surveys and, and to ways that we can improve what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Stark. Our next speaker is Tom Bishwadney, Director of Fairfax County Department of Transportation. Tom? Thank you very much, Vanessa. And, and most importantly, thank you for all those who have joined us this evening. As Supervisor Stork said, we really are trying to plan the future of the Richmond Highway Corridor. And uh, a significant part of that will be the uh, bus rapid transit system that we've been working on for a number of years. And um, we have some exciting updates for you tonight. But most importantly, we want to talk to you about how we're going to brand this new system. And um, both Vanessa and Jim uh, will have some uh, information and some, some great graphics to show you but most importantly, we want your feedback. Um, what do you like? What don't you like? Um, why do you like it or why don't you like it? So um, I'm going to turn it back over to you, Vanessa, let you jump into the presentation and um, look forward to hearing uh, or seeing the comments from, from those who are attending. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Uh, can you go to the agenda slide, please? Thank you. So again, uh, we're going to open this up and do a little bit of a BRT project update just to give you a project status. I want to share some information about our station design. And for those of you who missed um, on some of the fall 2020 efforts or, or winter 2020 efforts, we want to talk a little bit about those. Um, the bulk of the presentation will be on branding. We'll talk a little bit about next steps, survey overview, and end with the uh, Q&A. And uh, again, my name is Vanessa Aguayo. I'm with the county, uh, I'm sorry, Fairfax County Department of Transportation, and I'm the project manager for BRT. 
and I am joined here with Mr. Jim Wright. Uh, Jim, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. Uh, good, good evening. It's, I'm Jim Wright. I am a partner and I'm a senior strategic marketing planner with Pulsar Advertising. We're a, uh, a firm that specializes in, in helping uh, transit systems um, brand themselves and, and, and uh, market themselves across the country. So uh, thank you for the opportunity to be with you tonight. Thanks, Jim. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, let's so let's get into these updates. So right now, um, we want to talk a little bit about the design. Um, I think we have already uh, have this public and we've talked about this a little bit in past meetings that our design is approximately at 30% and we have updated our role plans and you can see them to the top right of your screen an example of what that would look like that we have this for the whole quarter. So if um, anyone wants to see specifically what's going on or get into the details, if you click our link, it'll take you directly to the BRT um, materials page. Again, there's a total of five maps. Um, we are still working on our National Environmental Policy Act or what we call ours our NEPA document. Uh, before we can move on to the next major milestone in our project, we have to close this document out and we are anticipating the signature uh, from our federal partner of um, the Federal Transit Administration by spring of 2021. And as always, as we continue through our design process, um, we always look for ways to uh, reduce or minimize those impacts, um, specifically to right of way. Um, and as you can see to the bottom right, enhance your stormwater management design. Um, the quarter is lacking in, in these um, uh, facilities. So as, as we're gonna take the opportunity and you can see a draft concept to the right to make these as a feature as we continue to design for the corridor. Next slide, please. So uh, another big thing is uh, station design in November. If you were following our meetings, uh, we, we showed off our, our concepts that we wanted to uh, bring to light of what we're, we're uh, discussing and what we want to bring to the uh, part of the system. So we did uh, hold a Spanish and English meeting in November. Um, and you can see them here. What we ended up doing is we found a little bit of extra time to go back and, and get more community input. So. Um, we thought through a branding effort that we, we can extend the survey and kind of do both efforts. So again, if you look here at the bottom, these are the two concepts that will be available for your review. And as part of this effort, we're also uh, doing a little bit of what we're calling the community charm. So we do have nine, nine stations for the corridor that we realize that within these nine stations, the communities are different. You know, we have Hybla Valley, Gum Springs, and et cetera. So we want to make sure that within these stations, we have community uh, identifiers, things that we can bring to light as part of these little sections through the, through the a corridor. So uh, the presentation, the materials, and our uh, survey, all of that information could be found here on our project website. So please uh, go online. Again, the, that survey is up and running and open until February 19th. Next slide, please. I talked a little bit about our virtual public meetings that we had uh, last fall slash winter. Uh, we started with the right of way uh, acquisition meeting that we did in October and that uh, I do recommend that anyone who's interested in that process or wants to know more specifically uh, about that uh, should go online and, and visit that page. The presentation has been recorded and is found online and we also do have a special uh, a page specifically for right of way that has information. Uh, we just talked about our station design concepts. We did that meeting in November. Um, and so we, we have another page and again, the, the materials and everything is on, on the website for you to review. And finally, we ended the year with a December meeting of what we called the uh, quarter end review. So not only do we talk about BRT and talk about what we've done during the year, but we also uh, had the project manager from the VDOT quarter improvement project to join us to be able to answer questions. We talked a little bit about the urban design guidelines for the quarter. So, you know, expectations, amenities that you can see through, that you will see throughout through the future and when uh, redevelopments occur. And then finally, we talked a little bit about Active Fairfax, which is a big uh, a study overhaul that we're doing. So while we are uh, implementing any gaps within Richmond Highway for a uh, pedestrian and bicycle, uh, this, this study focuses on outside of the quarter. So how do we get communities and connections from outside of Richmond Highway um, th through the communities. All of this information, again, in these presentations are recorded and found online. And if you look here at the bottom of the page, you can click on uh, the BRT website and find all this information. Next slide, please. All right, so I think I've talked enough. 
let's get into the real meat of this. <laughs> now I'm gonna hand it over to Jim to get into all the fun stuff that we've been working on. Take it away, Jim. Thanks, Vanessa. Um, and thank you all again for being with us tonight. Um, you know, branding and design can be a lot of fun in large part because while, you know, we all experience branding and advertising and marketing every day and, you know, we're a you know, brand is not something most people do every day. So let's review what we're trying to accomplish with branding and, you know, branding the Richmond Highway Bus Transit. Next slide. Uh, by creating a brand for this new BRT service, uh, we want to bring the service to life. By doing this, we, we start to build excitement about what the new BRT service can mean to the community. And we want the BRT brand to reflect, you know, the community, businesses, stakeholders, and potential users of the service. And we accomplish this by getting input from representatives from all those groups. And then finally, the new BRT brand will help us to secure federal funding for the project. So before we get into the branding, I'd like to show you just a short video that will help you understand you know, what a bus rapid transit or a BRT is all about. Robin, I think we need to unmute Camille. Years, people traveling between the Huntington Metro Rail Station and Fort Belvoir have had limited choices other than plodding along the slow, narrow, and overcrowded Richmond Highway. But all that is going to change. Introducing the new Richmond Highway Corridor, a transformation that will bring better transportation choices to everybody. Because no matter how you choose to get around, we know that avoiding traffic is on the top of your list. Here's how it will work. Drivers will have more room for cars. A new bus rapid transit system, or BRT, will give transit riders their own dedicated bus lanes, along with faster ways to board. Frequent service. and smart ways to stay moving. And cyclists and pedestrians will be safely separated from traffic with the new Richmond Highway Corridor. Wherever you're going and however you choose to go, you'll love how easy it is to get there. See more and share your opinion now at fairfaxcounty.gov. So because we're all consumers that encounter brands hundreds of times every day, we can become a bit overwhelmed by all this branding, you know, right? The truth is there's a lot more science than art to branding. And the process we're using um, here is exactly the same process we use uh, when we developed the brand for the DC Circulator. I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Circulator service. There were 26 different agencies involved in developing that brand, including the Secret Service, National Park Service, the Smithsonian, the White House, and loads of business improvement districts. But the result was an iconic brand in a city of icons that has withstood the test of time. The brand is now 15 years old. Our goal was to create a brand that was not only good for today, but was for good for the future, as Supervisor Stork referenced. And that would appeal to citizens and residents, travelers, businesses, employees, stakeholders, and potential users across a really wide age group from you know, the silent generation to Gen Z and everybody in between. Ultimately, this brand won't be just a name. It will represent the entire bus rapid transit service from the website to station signage, to the bus design, to ultimately your experience on that service and everything in between. So what we're building here is the foundation of this new service. So let's get started. The, uh, the, the branding process that we went through, next slide. Thank you, we'll go to the next, there we go. There, there was a very robust input, you know, conversation and give and take as we developed this brand, the branding you're gonna see today. 
was guided by a brand personality and goals as our foundation. We identified who the target audiences were and how the new BRT service would be would benefit them. We then started with 99 different brand names. It was very exhaustive. Um, we narrowed the names down and ultimately we developed 63 different logo concepts. Over 15 months, we had eight branding workshops with representatives from the community and dozens of internal meetings. We tested possible brands with four different focus groups that represented the entire length of the service area, as well as the Hispanic community and a group of Gen Z young people. With all that input, we narrowed the brands down to three brand families that you're gonna see today. Next slide. As I said, there's been extensive community input as we develop the branding you'll see today. We, we held eight branding workshops with represent all these representatives that you see here, community representatives, business leaders, faith-based organizations, Metro, biking community, and, and, and representatives from the supervisors and the supervisors themselves. Next slide. And through our interactions with this group, with the community and the brand development process, we identified five characteristics that we, that we felt the brand should represent. The community, speed, you, you saw in that, in that video that, that the service is gonna be much faster than traditional bus service. We wanted to accent the speed of the service, the corridor itself, natural elements, and then the history of the area. Next slide. So, okay, enough of the background and setup. Let's, let's take a look at the brands we've developed. Next slide. So let's start with the names themselves. So in the simplest forms, black and white type, these are the three brands we're bringing to you tonight. X, Rex, The One. Let's let's kind of add a little bit of, of context to these to these uh, to these names. Next slide. And I apologize. I'm going to read this to you. So um, please bear with me. So for the X, this name is a single letter. So it's as quick and easy as possible to write, read, and say. The letter X makes the service sound fast since it's the first sound in the word express. Plus, it gives off a sleek, modern, and futuristic vibe. The letter also connects the new service to the old Rex offering a sense of continuity. Next slide. Rex. This name is a variation on the name of the current service in the area, Rex. It's pronounced exactly the same as before, and it still stands for Richmond Highway Express. So it speaks to the service's location and speed. The only difference is that the new name now includes the H for highway in the acronym. Next. The one. This name is short and simple, able to be shown visually as a single number if desired. It references, it refers, references the place this service runs, up and down Route 1. So it's easy to understand for everyone in the community. And it's a flexible naming structure. So if future BRTs are built on other roads, they can use those number names related to those routes too. So those are the three brands. I think it's important before we get into the designs that that I want you to, to know and, and visualize. When you see anything that looks gray, um, I really want you to assume it's actually a metallic silver, like these images that you see here, the rocket or the keyboard or the, the airplane. It's that kind of that metallic silver. It's very hard to, to have that, that particular look express visually for you in a flat screen like we have here. So I want you to have that in your mind. Now let's take a look at each of these logos de designs uh, individually. Um, Oops, I'm sorry, G-Trans. Um, they'll go back, go back, go back, go back. Thank you, I'm sorry. Um, and we just want to give you an example. I apologize, I jumped ahead. Uh, here's a vehicle design that we did for the city of Gardena in California. And, and you can see how that flat design in the, in the actual uh, kind of graphic above, and then the actual pictures of it's very different. So it, 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 that, that, that context of silver, I think, is really important. Now let's get on with the design. And so we're going to show you the first thing we're going to, uh, the, we'll show you some options um, and we'll start with them in black and white. Uh, then we'll have some options uh, for that same logo and color. And following the color logo, we'll share, we'll share a bus or vehicle design that, will, that represents that brand or logo in that color, okay? Now, let's start with X. You had a sneak peek a second ago. <laughs> so this logo takes, the, takes advantage of the interesting symmetrical shape of the letter X, forming it out of two arrows to represent the back and forth nature of the new service. 
Adding thick, rounded speed lines to the logo communicates motion in a stylized contemporary way. So this is the uh, X logo in black and white. Next. So here's the logo for X in a navy blue and orange color combination. Next. So this is how the logo, the movement seen in that logo to life in a large graphic way. You know, bright colors combined with silver background to convey a modern and clean system that will be efficient and forward thinking. And the two different paint textures, you know, the traditional flat colors contrasting against that metallic silver uh, will add that extra visual interest to this vehicle. Next. So here's the logo for, uh, for X in a combination of navy and cyan. Next. And here's how that bus would look also for the, the X in navy and uh, the navy and cyan combination. Next. And the last color combination for, for X is the logo in a warm red color combination. Next. Yep. And here's how that bus would look in the warm red combination. So I recognize that's a lot to take in. So let, let's, I just want to show you the three logos together. Um, just so you can see the three color combinations and the three logos, how they would play out. Okay, let's let's move on to Rex. Excellent. So this logo plays with that back and forth uh, service idea as well. Only this time, the arrows are for, are formed by two letters E and X. The logo's rounded modern letter forms convey a forward thinking approach to this to the service in this region. So this is the logo for Rex in black and white. Next, here's the logo for Rex in navy blue and orange color. So I think with the colors, you definitely see that, that those arrows coming together to form that X a little better than just in black and white. Next, so here's the bus design. Um, it expands the, the curved directional shape of the arrow and the logo across the entire vehicle. The arrows take a subtle approach, you know, rather than filling the design with big obvious arrow shapes, to suggest forward movement in a tasteful way. All paint would be that shiny and metallic with just the logo and the white key lines appearing as flat colors. Okay, next. Now here's the logo for Rex in, the, in a combination of cyan and navy. And here's how it would look on the bus. And then the color combination for the warm red for Rex. And here's how the bus would look for that warm red combination. And again, to summarize, here are the three Rex logos in color. Okay. Last but not least, let's move on to the one. So this logo too expresses how the service allows people to travel back and forth, but adding curves to the arrow's path. It suggests more of an all-encompassing motion. With the new service, your travels can include not only Route 1, but also the entire region that surrounds it. So this is the logo for the one in black and white. So the next color is a new combination. Uh, this one is uh, for the one is in navy and sea foam. And then the bus. Um, this design fully embraces that regional motion concept, featuring sweeping cir circular shapes everywhere you look. Bright opaque colors are complemented by bright metallic silver, creating an appealing textural difference. 
and all elements combine to give the normal boring rectangular vehicle shape a sense of motion, even when it's standing still. The next color is this same, the, the, the one in cyan and navy. And then here's the bus for cyan and navy, the vehicle design. And then the last combination we have for you is, for the one is in orange. And then the vehicle design for this orange combination of the one. And so here are the, you know, the, all of the ones, um, uh, different logo combinations together. So now we need your help. We have an online survey that we need your help with. The survey will include all of the brands we've reviewed with you tonight and ask for your help and input um, on everything from the name to the logo to the bus design to the, really the overarching brand. Um, so I really urge you, please go to surveymonkey.com slash r slash rhbrt underscore branding um, and complete the survey today. Um, we would love if you would tell your friends and neighbors to do it as well. Um, we want as many citizens, employers, businesses, stakeholders, anybody to complete the survey uh, to, as possible to complete the survey. Uh, the survey is also available in Spanish as well. Next. And so kind of the next steps following this, once the survey is complete, uh, we'll summarize the results and then we'll share the survey results with the county supervisors and the executive committee, and they'll make the final decision on the branding. And so one last thing, again, I just ask you, please, please, please complete the survey today. And I thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you, Jim. Um, so here again, you can see our contact information. Uh, again, we have our website. If you just uh, search our keywords, Richmond Highway BRT, that's one way you can go on to the county website and find the BRT website. Or you can email us directly at dotbrt at fairfaxcounty.gov. We also accept comments or questions by mail, and our address is here at the bottom. Um, again, the branding survey here is the link itself, and it's open up until uh, February 19th. And before we open it up for uh, questions, which we will do, uh, we just wanted to remind everybody to please use the WebEx Q&A feature. Um, at the at, in the bottom of your window to open up and, and type in a question. And if you're calling us via telephone, please uh, press star three to raise your hand and you will be added to the uh, question queue. So I think with that, we'll open it up to see if anyone has uh, specific questions. Okay, thanks, Vanessa. So we do have a couple of questions. I'll start with one that's focused on branding. So Jim, uh, I'll ask you to respond to this. The question is, is there a rationale or inspiration for the color combinations? And if so, uh, what what is the rationale or inspiration? Uh, and then there's sort of a second part to this question that, uh, why did the one break away from the color combinations presented for X and Rex? A good question. So I, I appreciate that question, actually. Um, it um, there, there are rationales for those colors. Um, there's several different rationales. Um, but I will say all of them uh, were tested with the focus groups. And so what you're seeing in large measure is um, what resonated broadly across all those focus groups. As you saw, there was blue in every one, right? And so that blue is one of those colors that really resonated with people. And one of the things that blue uh, uh, really, uh, we started in with that color uh, was because of the proximity to water. Right, there's one of the natural resources really along this corridor, um, so that really was one of the factors in the, uh, behind the blue. The uh, the orange really came about as a result of us trying to um, uh, kind of capitalize or emphasize the fact that this is Fairfax County, and if you look at our seal and you look at uh, some and. Fairfax County uh, connector. Um, uh, orange is a color that is is prominent in in Fairfax County, and 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 so we felt, gosh, that makes a lot of sense for us to to consider uh, uh, orange. 
Um, so I'm trying to think of that, 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 that's, those are the ones that popped into my head. I apologize. Hopefully that answered your question. Thanks, Jim. Uh, another question is, uh, why consider the one when the region is getting away from uh, calling the roadway Route 1? Um, I, I, I'm going to ask Vanessa or Tom uh, to also uh, weigh in on this as well, or, or, or Eric. Um, but I think uh, for us, uh, it is um, it is Route 1. It is, uh, it jurisdictional or a government perspective when we when we're trying to do branding we're thinking about it we're coming at it from the citizens and the residents and the users of this system and the people we're trying to attract to use this system and so um in many cases uh, I, I i think there's many people that still uh think of that as route one and so that's the reason that we thought that would be uh that would be one that resonated and again um that would the reason that it's still here for your consideration is because it really did resonate with the um, focus groups and with the members of our committee who are who are helping to form the branding. And there's also an historical aspect um, as well of the road. We were asked and our consultant team was asked to uh, consider and take into consideration the history of the area. And it's this is the old highway one that goes all the way down up and down the East Coast, so there there is a historical context to it. And I think I would Thank just you. add that by using the one, um, you know, there's only one one, you know, only one service can be the first, the one. And so there was also some um, uh, discussion about, you know, being the first BRT and, and all of that in Fairfax County. So that was part of the discussion as well. Very good. Great, thank you. The next question is, uh, will there be any advertising or communications explaining the chosen naming convention? Uh, and this person noted that they, they were sort of turned off by the potential names until Jim explained them. Yeah, I so, mean, yeah. I, I definitely, thanks Jennifer. I, I definitely, uh, uh, as, as we've talked about this, and I will tell you, we've done a lot of uh, branding and service launches um uh positioning the the brand as you get ready to start the service um is something that is extremely important um and today luckily we have a lot of options beyond just advertising we have uh, social media and we have um it, it's a it's a expansive corridor we have the stations um there's a lot of things that comprise our opportunity to be able to help position help people understand uh, the the brands and 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 the and the the rationale the reasoning the thinking behind the brand so absolutely education and and helping people to get comfortable with the idea of the positioning of the brand because we want people to use it so you know that ultimately that's the that that's the purpose of tr uh, trying to educate and inform and engage folks. Okay, thanks, Jim. Uh, there's a question about Rex, so I'll ask um, uh, maybe Eric or Vanessa to respond to this. The question is, and I'm sorry, Rex, the current Rex service. <laughs> um, the question is, does the current Rex service go away with BRT? And if so, on what timeline uh, would there be a period where the new BRT and current Rex are existing, coexisting? Uh, well, the the answer is uh, yes. The Rex service uh, would go away. Um, there is still quite a bit of local bus service in the corridor that would remain, and we we haven't uh, you know gotten into the phase of um, <clears throat> re reevaluating our routes. We we started to, our transit team has started to look at that a little bit, but it is early. So um, you know we'll be looking at all the routes in the corridor, the local transit service, how those um, lines can connect uh, with the BRT system, where the stops are, the local bus stops, and how those um, are, you know, working collaboratively with with the new uh, BRT stations as well. And then, of course, on the on the very southern end uh, of the BRT system, uh, we're looking at how to continue. Currently, REC service goes into the Ford, and we're looking at how to provide uh, that local bus service connection into the Ford. So, you know, pieces of the REC system will um, essentially be remained in some some level as a more of a local connector piece of the system but the the main main line running up and down the quarter will go away great thank you eric 
Uh, there's another question about the stations themselves, uh, the design of the station. So, Eric, maybe you want to respond to this one as well. Um, there's a question about will there be any safety features for passengers at bus stations? So, this is not related to branding, but more on the station design. Um, it, yeah, yes. If you're talking about um, cameras, for example, I know that we're looking at uh, putting uh, those types of uh, features and systems into the stations. Um, you know, that's pr probably the main um, piece of surveillance or safety system equipment that we've been putting in. I don't know if we talked about Vanessa, remind me, did we talk about um, call phones or call buttons? I don't remember if we got into that level of detail yet. It's, <clears throat> sorry, it's been discussed um, right now. I think none of our connector uh, stations or buses have that uh, function. So I, it, for now, I, I don't know that we have a complete answer, but that is something we're looking at. And I'd also add, uh, yes, we're, we're looking at uh, video cameras and we do have live feeds that kind of help us uh, with that, but that's still something we're reviewing. Great, thanks to both of you. Uh, those are all of the questions we have up right now. This doesn't look like anyone currently has their hand raised on the phone either. If I could just um, add a little bit to the safety features, clearly we're going to be upgrading all the crosswalks and all the intersections as well as part of this. Um, so if people were talking about kind of pedestrian safety, um, we're definitely um, including that as part of our um, design and, and, and um, kind of baked into the system as a whole. So. Um, in addition to physical safety, we're also looking at, you know, pedestrian safety as well. And actually, Tom, on that note, you bring up an excellent point. We're also lighting the whole corridor. So uh, I think right now we existing, there's only maybe some intersections on Richmond Highway that have lighting, and, and that's something that's going to change. So we'll have roadway lighting as well as uh, pedestrian and, and bicycle as well as station lighting. So that, that is a big safety feature, I think, that the corridor doesn't have today. And while we wait for more questions, um, we just remind everybody that our survey is, you know, the link is here at the bottom. If anyone wants to jump on that and start um, being some of the first people to respond to the survey and to please share this with your uh, community and friends. Um, we are also going to be uh, providing flyers so that uh, people can access and, and share around. So uh, you have our email here, dotbrt at fairfaxcounty.gov. So if anyone is interested in these flyers, or in another way to, to be stay in contact with us is through um, our instant contact list. So we always email out uh, these flyers and information on meetings that we're having uh, uh, through our constant contact. So, so please feel free to email us if you're interested in that and want to join. That's another way to, to stay on top and get the latest information. Um, we'll also like to remind you that we do have a, a separate uh, effort, which is the stations and the survey. And, and, and again, we want to know feedback on those as well, which are are still uh, open up and both of these branding and station surveys are going to be open through February 19th. Thanks, Vanessa. Uh, while you were giving that overview, we did have a few more questions pop up, so I'll go through those. Um, so, Jim, this is for you about branding. Uh, you mentioned orange as a reference to Fairfax County's seal and also as a color used by Fairfax Connector. Uh, the question is, will this BRT service be a part of Connector? I guess that's actually maybe more for Vanessa than Jim, sorry. So yes, uh, well, it, I, I guess you could, it's different, right? Because Connector is our local service, but it, 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 it will be a system underneath our, our general transit services. So uh, FCDOT will be managing uh, the system itself, I guess, as part of the connector. So if you look at it that way, and I guess on that note, I'd add that, you know, we're not expecting you to carry a different smart trip card. So uh, the expectation is that you would be able to carry the same card to, to get all the regional systems, right? So whether it be WMATA, connector, and then we would just add BRT to this list. Got it, thank you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we have a question. Um, about, let's see, there's a question about the station design, the stationary design. Um, any thoughts of having overhead walkways? Um, this person ref notice, noted that they would be expensive, but that there are certain er areas where there's more foot traffic where overhead walkways might be desirable. 
Um, well, right now, no, I guess is the answer. We, we're looking again at pedestrian safety of, of how to, to get across safely. But I will add that as part of the Richmond Highway Corridor Improvements Project, and that's the project that VDOT is doing. Um, so they're between, uh, like I guess it'd be Sherwood Hall Lane to Jeff Todd Way, we are putting two underpasses uh, to connect through there. So the, again, they're not above, but if you want to kind of avoid the signal, those would be two other locations we'll be doing that. One is specifically close to Sherwood Hall Lane, maybe not exactly, but um, it, it's the tunnel. It would be a, an underpass right by a little hunting creek, um, I guess would be the, the one um, closest to the north. And the other, this question has come up before in other meetings and the quite you know the the challenge that um we have for, for example if you look at the uh the rail system in tyson's it's elevated and so it makes sense to have the you know escalators and the the bridges going over to the um to the metro stations because they're on elevated platforms in our case um, our brt stations are uh, at grade and they're considerably smaller than a metro station so in order to get uh out to an island uh, and onto the platform, you would have to go up and then across and then down again. And so you'd have um, elevators, escalators, or ramps. Um, there's there's not a lot of room um, out in the median uh, to put all of that infrastructure, and um, it, it would it would get very complicated and very expensive quickly. So it, so we we are not um, considering the overhead structures at all. We get mixed um, reaction to those. You know, some people like them uh, because I think they feel they're safe, but um, a lot of people don't like them um, visually for what they, you know, what they look like and what they, you know, add or detract from an area in, in the corridor. So um, th there has been seemingly, from my reflection, reluctance from the planners um, and our planning folks and those that have been involved in the comp plan process to put structures, interchanges, and other structures in the Richmond Highway Corridor. And the desire has been to keep things at grade where people can walk and, you know, connect um, across the street and connect to buildings, restaurants, and things that are happening at, at the ground level and not elevated level. <clears throat> Great. Thanks, Eric. Um, let's see, Jim, we have a couple questions for you about RECs. So maybe Camille, if you want to go back a slide, that might be useful for these. Um, one question is, what is the purpose of the arrow in RECs? It's really a design feature um, to talk, it's this idea that um, uh, the service, BRT service, will actually go from the hunting metro station to it, its end point, um, and that varies by, uh, by phase, um, and then it will return to the hunting metro station. So this idea that it's bi-directional, right? You can either go to the hunting metro station, or if, you know, if you're coming back, you can, you know, uh, go the other way. So regardless of whether you're headed into the corridor or you're headed out of the corridor, um, you can get, you can go in either direction. So that idea of having bi direction was really the reason that the arrows were used. And then the fact that it created an X just that, that, that the beauty of this. So. Great. Thank you. Um, also related to Rex. Um, do you think people will confuse the name with the current Rex system, you know, instead of the, the new BRT system, and maybe you could speak to some ways we might be able to address any potential confusion. I mean, this came up I, in our focus groups. That very issue uh, arose about uh, about that, and I think the the, the um, consensus was um, that by adding the H, we differentiated this service from the current uh, REC service. We we wanted to just to, to say that this is not the existing REC service. Um, it's faster. There's uh, fewer stops. It's a different. Uh, uh, faster, it, it will have its own set of lanes. So it's a, it's a, it is a much better uh, quality service than the current Rex. Um, and and so by having an homage, a, a, a tilt of the hat to uh, the previous service, but adding an H uh, and a completely new look and feel, uh, we uh, the consensus was that there wouldn't be a, a sense of confusion, especially since the vehicle will look so different um, and the stations will look so different. So. Okay, thanks, Jim. Uh, Camille, we can go back to the, the last slide if you'd like. Uh, we have a few questions and more general about BRT rather than branding. 
Uh, so the first one is, has the addition of feeders uh, to Route 1 been, dis been considered? Um, this person noted that the distance into communities often exceeds one mile uh, from Route 1. Absolutely, and that, that's part of our study, right? To make sure that what, when we're not duplicating service, but to reaching those communities, because you're right. I mean, we all know that whether it be a, a half mile if you're walking or a full mile if you're, if you're riding a bike or so, um, we want to make sure that we can get uh, the patrons, patrons sorry, from uh, the quarter into the system. So, though we don't have final, you know, feeders, what that would look like, because that's not something we would change until uh, uh, BRT is up and running, but that is definitely part of the study. And maybe relatedly, there's another question. Um, are there changes to the parkway bus routes as part of this, this initiative, this project? Uh, that is a great question. So, Go ahead, Tom. So this is Tom. So as when we get closer to the actual implementation, we are going to look at the entire um, bus network on the southern part of Fairfax County. So at that time, um, we'll be looking at not only um, feeder services, Vanessa mentioned, but those connections outside of the corridor. So for example, over to Springfield Mall or up to the um, uh, some of the ones from the southern part of the corridor over into um, uh, the Fort Belvoir North area. So we'll be looking at all of those and there'll be a, a robust community engagement process to refine those routes so that they complement each other. So the Rex isn't going to operate, or the, the BRT is not going to operate in isolation. It will be um, integrated with the rest of the transit network on the southern part of the county. Great. Thanks, Tom. Let's see, there's a question about right-of-way acquisition. Uh, so I'll ask Ricky to respond to this. Um, are there any updates on the timeline when property will be acquired, uh, when construction will start, and when the completion of the project is expected? So I guess that maybe is a bit for uh, Ricky and uh, Vanessa or others. I can jump in for the first part. Um, we're, we're wrapping up our uh, NEPA process and we should be begin uh, right of way acquisition on some of the whole parcel acquisitions which have been identified. Uh, in approximately uh, end of fe February, beginning of March of this year. So uh, it's coming up soon. Um, the partial acquisitions, uh, we'd be looking to start those uh, in the summer of next year. So uh, we're still about a year out for those. Thanks, Ricky. And I guess a part of construction, I think the question when we're beginning construction, um, well, you know, we have multiple stages. I think that, I think we've talked about this, that the first one where you can actually kind of see us uh, boots in the ground would be for utility reconstruction or, or relocations. So we're expecting that to be in early 2023. Um, actual construction, you know, and not in, until we can move uh, all of the right of way or, or get the right of way for us to actually do the road construction, that's farther down the line. So I, I think we're anticipating that to be around 2025, 2026. And we are still, um, uh, our planned or, or our schedule is showing that we can open both sections of BRT by 2030. Great, thank you, Vanessa. Uh, let's see, there's a question uh, about bus passes. So it says, currently Fairfax County Public School, high school students can get a Fairfax connector pass at no cost. Will they be able to get a pass to this BRT mode of transportation too? Yes their passes will be um, accepted on the BRT. Great. Thank you. Let's see, going back to branding, um, there's a question about sort of refinements moving forward. So once a direction in the overall brand is decided, will the logo be refined? Uh, for example, you know, if someone does not like a certain logo, but they like, um, th this person does not like the Rex logo, but they like Richmond Highway Express providing continuity. Um, so, could are there places where the font or color or emphasis could be changed in these logos moving forward? Well, I think first of all, the, just to be clear, the 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 survey is really about um, uh, you know getting soliciting a, a lot of, uh, of input in um, and 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 then trying to um, uh, take all that, analyze it, and and then 
you're trying to uh, identify some trends and things that are common about all of those. Um, um, it's, 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 but it's not a voting process. You know, it's not like, well, if this particular one gets the most votes, that's going to be the one that'll be selected. It's not, it's not like that. Um, uh, it's, it's not how market research is conducted. Um, but I think in the long term, you know, the process that we've been through uh, to get to this point has been, you know, quite extensive. It's probably been the uh, most uh, extensive branding process I've been a part of in my career. Um, and so I think that it's been very transparent. It's been very in uh, the community and uh, and stakeholders have been very actively involved. And so I think to get to the point where we're change the logo. Um, I, I don't see that happening. Um, I'm sure in, I'm certain anything is possible, but I think what we've got are some really good, uh, good options. Now, could you say, um, I really like this particular color combination that wasn't done, that was done in one particular group, but wasn't done in another group, and I'd like to make that combination? Yes, that's something that could be explored uh, down the road, but um, I, I think font and uh, colors and things like that are all, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty settled down based on, on where we've come to thus far. Great. Thank you, Jim. Uh, that was the final question we have up as of right now. So thank you everyone for those questions. Yeah, but those have been some really good questions. Um, well, we're here a little longer. So uh, while, while you guys think of questions, I guess, um, I'm going to repeat myself because uh, we have the time. So branching survey, uh, here here we are. Uh, you can see again, it's surveymonkey.com slash r slash rhbrt underscore branding. Uh, that's where you can go directly. I, I guess I mentioned um, that um, you on the call or you on the um, meeting with us tonight get the first look at uh, looking at this uh, survey. Um, but for everybody else or the community will be on um, the first thing tomorrow morning. And then you'll be able to pass around the link. But um, for now, we are wanting, wanting to share it uh, with you guys tonight. So again, just a reminder that that survey will be open until February 19th. And then we also have a, a different effort, and that's for stations. Uh, we, our station survey is uh, have been extended a little longer, actually, um, until February 19th, just like branding. Uh, so we do have information on that on the website. If anyone wants to go and hasn't given us input on stations, and please share again with uh, friends from the quarter or community members. Um, if you are interested in us giving you flyers to spread the news, spread the word. If you are also, um, you know, have your Twitter accounts and your TikTok accounts and you want to share those, uh, we encourage that. So email us at dotbrt at fxcounty.gov and we will be happy to, to send you flyers that you can um, post around. So did that hopefully help us get some more questions, Jenny? Uh, nope, no more questions as of right now. But I will go ahead. I pasted the, the branding survey into the chat. And since you mentioned the station design survey has been reopened, I will also put that into the chat right now. Thank you, Jenny. Sure. It's great. I guess if you are calling us via telephone, I'd also remind you that we are taking questions. Um, you can see here, uh, you just press star three to raise your hand. And I don't think there's a queue, but you will be added to the queue to ask a question. So I guess while we're waiting, I'd also remind people that on the website, we do have a roadmap that show the design throughout the whole quarter. So uh, you can open one of those up depending on where you live. So whether that be Penda or, or Lockheed, uh, all that, those detailed information of how, you know, the, where the transit way, the road, the transit lanes are lining up or where the sidewalk and um, for you to see station platforms, that type of thing, those type of details, those are available on, on the website. Uh, right of way information for anyone interested in those details. We have a separate right of way page as well as a right of way presentation that was done in October. Um, in November, if you wanted to drill down on any details, we did have a station design meeting and the presentation and information is also found on the website. And uh, following tonight, we will also be posting this presentation and uh, the PowerPoint on our website as well.
And Vanessa, just to reiterate um, the point that you made about sharing the the information about the survey, both surveys actually, the, the station survey and the branding survey, um, we really would like to get as many um, people respond to the survey as possible. The more the merrier. Um, we <clears throat> have had surveys in the county that have got 15,000 people responding. Um, some, some surveys obviously don't get nearly that many, but um, we really do uh, want to hear from people. We, we've extended the station survey to, to allow for more responses, and we're going to give you plenty of time on, on this survey as well. So um, please circulate it uh, to friends, family, coworkers, strangers, um, whoever you, uh, you might run into. But um, uh, we definitely want um, everybody's participation in, in trying to pick this name, because once we pick the name, you know, it's going to be with this um, BRT system for a long time. So we want to do it uh, as, as close to right as we absolutely possibly can. Thank you, Tom. Well, um, we're going to do one final push then in case anyone has last minute questions, feel free to add them. And, and while you do think of any, um, I guess we just, again, remind you that our website is here, uh, fairfaxcounty.gov slash transportation, and just search the keywords Richmond Highway BRT. Our email, dotbrt at fairfaxcounty.gov. And we, we take all comments, so <laughs> please feel free to send us comments or questions through mail. And our, our mailing address is here at the bottom, uh, Fairfax County Department of Transportation, uh, 4050 Legato Road, Fairfax County. Uh, again, our branding survey for those who are on the call tonight, uh, the link is here at the bar, uh, bottom of the survey monkey. And uh, again, there's various ways to get in contact with us. Uh, and if you do are interested in any of our flyers for station design or for branding, we encourage that you just email us and we're happy to provide this information or others. And in fact, uh, in, in, you know, we have been reaching out to some uh, civic associations and um, homeowners associations along the quarter. So uh, we're happy to, to reach out to them or, or for you to give them the information. That's another great way to get the word out. So any of those uh, ways, are, are, we'd love to hear from you and, and we do continue to check our box and take questions and comments as, as things come in. Sorry, speaking of questions and comments, we do have one more that came in. Uh, this okay. is related related to branding focus groups. Um, Jim, can you elaborate on how many focus group sessions were involved in creating these brands and selecting, you know, designs and colors? Sure, absolutely. Um, in terms of formal focus groups, there were four uh, focus groups. One was uh, focused on uh, the geography of the northern portion of the corridor. Another focus group was focused on the southern portion of the corridor. Uh, one was uh, focused on Hispanic members of our community. And then one focus group was on uh, Gen Z. So uh, I think every participant was under the age of 25. Um, since uh, they will likely be the longest users of the service. Uh, so it was really valuable. Uh, those are very different uh, groups um, and it was, it was very valuable input. Okay. Jim, Thanks, while you're Jim. talking about the focus groups, do you want to elaborate on the fact that initially we were planning to just bring two names forward, but as a result of the input we got um, from the focus groups, uh, we decided to actually bring three names forward? Yeah, that's that's true, Tom. You know, originally when we do we do branding, we typically try to get it down to like two options, two choices. Um, but in this case, uh, the focus groups were very, you know, there was they were very different groups. I, I mean, I, probably the most uh, non homogeneous group of focus groups I've ever had. Um, uh, they there were three of them that literally one. One picked the X, one picked the one, one picked Rex. And um, and so really out of respect, uh, you know, for the diversity and the and the, um, uh, the interest and support, frankly, uh, for the three different uh, brands, we made the decision to bring all three forward in terms of the, the online survey. Um, I will say, you know, as I mentioned in my presentation, there, you know, there were eight or nine branding workshops that we did with lots of uh, members of the community, um, as well as uh, lots of other kind of informal uh, uh, kind of workshops or, for, or, or focus groups we did um, with supervisors, representative supervisor staff and, and other community organizations. So, um, but I would say you asked specifically about focus groups and so there were, there were, there were four. 
Thanks, Jim. Uh, there is uh, another question has popped up here. Um, thank you for these questions. Uh, was there an effort to reach out to people older than older than 25? Um, those of us in our 30s and 40s and even 50s will still be around to use the system. I, I should have figured I was going to get that. Uh, I, I, that's absolutely correct. Uh, you're, you're absolutely right. And I will say the other three focus groups, uh, everybody was uh, over the age of 30. So it was th that group was well represented um, in terms of the focus groups. And I would say um, in all of the branding work that we had done, um, a good portion, the reason we, we had the youth involved in a particular focus group, frankly, was because of the lack of their participation in the process kind of up to that point. Um, we, were, we were well represented with folks who were in their 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s even. Um, so uh, th th that, that group was well heard from, trust me. <laughs> me being one, I, I appreciate that perspective. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. As of now, that uh, was our final question. I'll keep an eye on it. Okay, thanks, Jenny. Well, and uh, I was reminded that uh, you know today we did an English presentation of the brand, and tomorrow we will be here again and, and do this uh, in Spanish. So if, if you know anybody else who either missed it and wants to see it in Spanish or just uh, wants to see it in Spanish in general, uh, we will be here uh, at, at the same time and doing the same presentation. So. That is also an option. And we'll also be putting this recording on, on the website as well. Yes. Thank you, Jenny. All right. I think I've uh, repeated myself a little too many times, maybe boring people on, on the branding serving where you can find it. So I won't go through all that again, but uh, again, you can see here all, all our different links. And I think, again, Jenny did put the, the direct links in, in the chat box. For, whether, for both uh, the station survey and the branding survey, which both again will be open until February 19th. So unless we get any last minute questions in these last couple of seconds, uh, we wanna thank you all for joining us tonight and participating. Uh, we hope it, uh, you learned something, we hope you share, we hope you're excited. Um, again, we're, we're looking for any and all feedback on this. So we're excited, we're excited to bring you this. Uh, you know, it's a brand new system, brand new stations, and we're really hoping you know, it is in the center of Richmond Highway, so it'll be, it'll be a new uh, a bringing of together of both uh, both sides of the road. So, thank you all for joining us.